Adam, my, the time's coming to an end. Who do I need to recognize? Mr. Kiley, you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Dunn, I want to uh, thank you uh, again uh, after going through the unthinkable, every parent's worst nightmare for your courage to speak out and do everything you can to stop other families from having to go through the same thing. The reality is that far too many families in this country have found themselves in the same unthinkable position. I've worked with a number of them uh, in my own district, uh, one of whom is the Didier family. Laura and Chris Didier lost their son, Zach, uh, two days after Christmas in 2020. He was a 17-year-old senior at Whitney High School, an Eagle Scout, soccer player, star of the high school musical, no history of drug use. I've had the chance to get to know uh, Laura and her husband, Chris, Zach's parents, uh, over the course of the last couple years as they, like you, uh, have worked to raise awareness about the dangers of fentanyl. Uh, and as part of her work, uh, Laura is actually uh, here in Washington, D.C. today uh, meeting with lawmakers and is now here with us uh, in the room. Laura, I don't know if you want to just briefly stand up so everyone can see your, uh, your button there. This is Zach here. Laura will also be my guest uh, next week at the State of the Union. Thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you, Mr. Dunn, again as well. There is bipartisan support in this country among Americans for securing the border. And there should be bipartisan support in this committee and in this Congress for supporting the border. But I've been rather discouraged by what I've heard at today's hearing. Now, there have been some thoughtful comments on both sides of the dais, but frankly, on one side of the dais, there has been a lot of excuses. We've heard that there may be other sources of the fentanyl in this country. Does that mean we should ignore the overwhelming nexus with the vulnerabilities at our border? We've heard that what we really need is comprehensive immigration reform. That is a question separate and apart from securing the border, which is about enforcing the laws that we already have. We've heard that immigration, illegal immigration, has been a problem for the last 50 years. Well, the two biggest years in terms of number of illegal border crossing by far have been the last two years. 2022 fiscal year, 2021 fiscal year. The month with the highest number of illegal border crossings is not some random month in the last 50 years in the 1970s or the 1980s. It was last month. December of 2022. The problem keeps getting worse, and what strikes me is the lack of compassion from this administration and those making excuses for it. Compassion for the communities and families being ravaged by fentanyl. Compassion for those who are victims of the horror of human trafficking. And compassion for the migrants themselves, who are now dying in record numbers. During fiscal year 2022, a record number, 856, died attempting to cross the southwest border. That is three times as many as just in 2020. Another facet of this problem is the issue of sanctuary jurisdictions, which we are seeing uh, increasingly across the country, where jurisdictions actively interfere with federal immigration enforcement. My own state of California in 2017, the supermajority legislature and governor declared California a sanctuary state, forbidding local law enforcement from communicating with ICE regarding the whereabouts of wanted criminals. These are folks who uh, are not just immigrants, not just undocumented immigrants, but who have committed crimes while they are here. And from the very beginning, it was predicted that this would raise serious problems. The State Sheriff's Association wrote before this was adopted, our overarching concern remains that limiting local law enforcement's ability to communicate and cooperate with federal law enforcement officers endangers public safety. They said it would preclude staff in our jails from notifying ICE at the request of the pending release of certain wanted undocumented criminals. And we saw, we have seen time and time again, this prediction bear itself out in tragic ways. 
Just last year in California, there was one of the most horrific crimes I've ever seen. You had a man who murdered his own three, or his own three daughters and their chaperone at a church just a few miles from the state capitol. It turns out this individual was in the country illegally and had been in police custody just the week before because he had assaulted a police officer. And ICE had asked to be notified of his release, but the sheriff's office said we can't tell you because of the sanctuary state law. So, uh, Sheriff Daniels, I just wanted to give you uh, a moment uh, if you had any thoughts on the ways that sanctuary policies are contributing to these problems. Well, Congressman, thank for your comments, and thank you because that's something sheriffs around the country are talking about. This is where that partnership with our federal uh, uh, partners, state and local have to work together. That collective recipe of success, as I stated in my open statement, is true to how we protect our communities. Thank you for saying that. Thank the gentleman. Uh, Sheriff,